This is PIP from Neutral Labs. It's a clocked modulation source that lets you morph through waveforms and create complex control voltages. So Neutral Labs has a handful of really cool DIY kits available. The Elmira has been getting a lot of attention online, but some of their other modules like PIP uh, deserve some attention too. So I reached out to Neutral Labs to see if they would be interested in sponsoring some videos and they sent me along this kit to put together and demo for you guys. So I asked them to send me the kit rather than sending me a built module because if you watch my channel you'll know that I really am pushing DIY builds. I think it's a great way to do modular. It's fun, it saves a little bit of money and at the same time it just allows you to feel a little bit more connected with your instrument. This one's extremely easy to put together. It would be a great beginner project. All the tiny surface mount stuff, you can kind of see a little bit of that. All of that tiny stuff is done for you. Um, all you really have to do is just the knobs and the buttons, some LEDs, jacks, things like that. All in all, it took me about 20 minutes at a relaxed pace to put this together. And I filmed myself putting it together. So if you wanna see what's involved in that, hang around. I'll put that at the end of the video after I demonstrate what it can do. Quick plug for my Patreon page. I give away DIY builds on a monthly basis, similar to the PIP. If you wanna join in that fun, make sure to check out the link in the description. Join tier three. At tier two, you can get some PDF patch books and things like that. If you're already signed up, thank you very much. Either way, make sure you like and subscribe and let's jump into the PIP. Okay, so I've got PIP here with a few other modules. Many of these are DIY builds. I've got the Turing machine that I'm gonna be using to sequence things, uh, Cossetronics quantizer, AI synthesis VCO, a Bifaco attenuverter, an AI synthesis filter, and the CubiSynth Quad LFO. Then of course, there are other modules that are not DIY builds, Maths, PAMs, a Dofer Multiple, After Later Audio's Cumulus, I'm gonna be using a Dofer VCA right here, and of course, we'll check out how everything looks using the Mordex data. These cool little blank panels, you have enough VCAs, they actually come with the Neutral Labs modules. Let's go through the basic layout, get oriented. As I said in the intro, there are two channels, A and B. You can use these knobs to morph through the waveforms. Each of the channels has two outputs, right here and here for channel A, and here and here for channel B. The top one is going to be just positive voltage, zero to five volts. The bottom one is bipolar, so it goes from negative five volts to positive five volts. This white LED is the tempo. Uh, as I mentioned, it's clock synced, and you can either have it running on its internal clock, which it is right now because it's not patched in anything, or you can sync it to an external clock right here. When we get into the patching, I'm gonna be using PAMs to clock sync it. Now channel B is the master channel. It is always synced to the clock, and you can adjust how channel A interacts with the clock or really more specifically how it interacts with channel B using this division knob. These page buttons here are what we use to go through the different wavetables. I'm gonna show you those in a second too. There are 16 pages of wavetables and I'll show you a few examples of those. You can also long press it to go into free mode which means that it's unsynced from the clock Long press it again to go into phase mode, which lets you adjust the phase relationship between the two channels using the division knob. Lastly, this red button here is the record button. Each of the wavetables has three waves that you can morph between, basically a left, middle, and right. And the record button allows you to record a wave to replace the middle wave in the wavetable. You can do it using CV, or if nothing's patched in here, you can just simply record your knob movement. I'll show you that in a minute, but first, let's go through a couple of the wavetables. There are 16 pages of wavetables that you can use. The manual has some nice graphs to show you what they look like. I found that as I've been playing with it for a few days that there are some that I gravitate to more than others, and you start to get a feel for all of them the more you play with them. So this is a great example, this is page three. This is what the graph looks like from the manual. 
So you can see that counterclockwise right here is denoted by a solid black line. So turning the knob all the way to the left gives you this saw wave. And you can see how the manual is showing just one cycle. So that's of course just a decreasing line, but that's a saw wave. If we turn the knob all the way clockwise, we get the gray line, which is the pulse wave. And if we turn it to the middle, then it's the dotted line, which is this kind of falling sine wave. So that's really all a wavetable is, is it's waves on a predetermined table. And so right here, this is just a small table. It's a table of three different waves. And we can morph between them and this is what it looks like. So as I turn it to the left, it slowly becomes that saw wave. And this is sort of a mixture. And then there's that falling sine wave. And then as I keep going, it'll sort of straighten out and become a pulse wave. And then lastly, you can control this knob through CV. Uh, the only thing to note is that it it accepts zero to five volts. Um, it won't hurt the module if you send in lower or higher voltage than that, but it just really won't have any effect. So for instance, I have this uh, quad LFO that is bipolar, and if I send it in, you'll notice that it doesn't go the entire range of the weight table. It sort of cuts it off. So something to be aware of. Let's listen to a sound example. I'm gonna have this wavetable modulating the cutoff of my filter. Now right now it's set to a lower division. So this is a two to one. So it goes through uh, one cycle every time, every two pulses of the clock. Let's start with a one to one ratio. And if we slow down the division, you can also create some really fun effects by doing something like this three to two. It creates a kind of syncopated vibe. <laughs> So you can create some kind of funky rhythms. I mean, you can do all kinds of creative stuff with it. So there's also some sample and glide and sample and hold randomized waves. These are on page zero. And just as an aside, it's also a great way to orient yourself. If you don't know what page you're on and you maybe got lost with how many buttons you were pushing, you can find page zero by setting the knob on channel A to 12 o'clock. Uh, and that will give a flat voltage. So here, let me turn off this one. If you start scrolling through, you'll notice the different wavetables. And when you get... And when you get a flat voltage like this, you know you found page zero. And it's the same with channel B. You just gotta go all the way to the left with channel B. So let's go through that one and get the blue line here to a flat space. And there we go. There's our flat voltage for channel B. So this is where the two different channels differ a little bit. Other than this, they're exactly the same. Channel A has a sample and glide to the left, flat at noon, and sample and hold to the right. So you can see if I go here, this is the sample and glide. And then if I go all the way to the right, that's our sample and hold. Let me turn this to a slightly longer division of time so you can see. 
So this will give some, some random waves or random sample and holds. Channel B, however, has a flat voltage all the way to the left, and then you can get sample and hold at about half amplitude right here, and then sample and hold with the full amplitude if you turn it all the way to the right. So let's go ahead and use the, our sample and holds to sequence the whole rig. So I'm gonna take the Turing machine out of the equation. So now we're not even using it at all. And we're gonna go ahead and send in the sample and hold into our quantizer. Let's listen to that. Now that's pretty crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use my attenuverter and offset to control it a little bit. So we'll go into the attenuverter. This will allow us to control the octaves and just how much of a range it has. Lastly, let me show you what the record function does. I mentioned it earlier, but basically, so here's the wavetable I've got for channel A. In the middle, you got this triangle wave. To the left, it's a sine wave. And it kind of morphs between them. This Then it turns into these sort of um, spikes. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna replace this triangle wave. So we can do it in a couple different ways. I'm just gonna turn the knob a whole bunch by when I'm pushing this down. And you'll notice that now it's got that for the middle wave. The sine wave stays in place. And that's what it looks like. So it gives you a little bit more control over it. Now I've noticed that when I'm using just the knob turning, it either helps to really slow the tempo down so you can get the full range here, um, or you can plug in a CV source and actually you can use the wavetables from from what's going on in B, you can plug that right into the CV right here and record a, a new wave into your wavetables here. So there you have it. That should give you an idea of what PIP can do. It's a really easy DIY build and I highly recommend checking it out. It would be a great first build for someone or if you're just kind of still learning the ropes of soldering, this would be a great one to try out. If you wanna buy an assembled module, I'll put a link to Perfect Circuit in the description. You can buy through there and I get a small tip at no additional cost to you. But if you're looking for the DIY build, you can get the kit at Thonk. I'll also put a link in the description and that comes with all the, the panel and everything else you need to build it. So if you wanna see what it's like to put it all together and how easy it is, hang out. That portion of the video is coming right up. But if you're saying goodbye, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is the build of PIP. This is all the stuff that comes with, comes with it. You get a bunch of goodies, a multiple, a pin. And here are all the components. The panel, and you can see that all the small service mount stuff is already put. So to get started, the first step is putting the IC chip socket in. And then we're gonna put our header in. This is where you connect it for power. And then after these two components are in, we're pretty much gonna put the rest of the components on and then put the panel on 
so that way we can make sure that everything lines up. So here are the buttons, that comes first. Now we're gonna put in our pots and you gotta cut off the little tab there, that's the anti-rotation tab. So you just gotta trim that off and put everything in place. There's a build guide too, I'll put a link to that in the description. That's really good as well. It was very easy for me to put this together. So it's important to remember that you're just, you're putting all these things in place and then we're gonna put the top panel on and then solder everything together. So I, I haven't actually soldered anything right now. And it's especially important for the lights because after we put the panel on, we're gonna push them up uh, so that they're really close to the top of the panel. So you, you don't want to solder anything at this point. The only thing I've soldered is the header and the IC chip socket. But now that everything's in place, I'm going to put the panel on and then screw everything in so that way I know that everything lines up and everything is even. So at this point, I'm going to push the lights all the way to the top of the panel. So it pushes them up a little bit and I'll solder those first just so that they, they, they don't slide down. It's also important, the only components that uh, the polarity matters are the lights. So just make sure that you put the long leg in the positive hole. Everything else, it doesn't really matter. It only fits one way anyway. <laughs> But those are the only ones you really have to worry about. And then it's just a matter of soldering everything together. There's a lot of holes I could easily see missing one. So if you put it together and for whatever reason it's not working, just make sure that you solder together all the different holes. Once that's done, all you have to do is insert the IC chip and then you add some knobs and you're finished.